my enjoyment lies 100% in helping others get that sort of deep understanding of their why or their purpose or their path. I mean, the biggest frustration that many athletes that come to me have is that I keep telling them, it will appear for you. Do not try to force it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't manipulate your life path and they don't wanna hear that. And it takes a few years and then they'll come back and go, you know what? You're sort of right back then. I'm right. ready to take that journey now. Right. But, but my power meter says this, Chris, and <laughs> yeah. I needed to say this. Yes, but the only way it's gonna <laughs> say that is if you yeah. let go right. and let, you know, it's yeah. like we know from swimming, mm -hmm. you know, it's like whenever we're too tight um, on, I'm, today this set is gonna be so intense. Like you try to get yourself mentally ready for it. And then you get there and you're three or four repeats in and you're nervous and you're not swimming well and your walls are awful and you're just like chopping through the water. And then it's like, what am I making such a big deal out of this? Mm -hmm. And then slowly you return into what you're capable of. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's the hardest part, that dichotomy. Yeah. Caring enough that for the for the result and the outcome, uh -huh. but also letting go enough for letting the result and outcome to happen for you. That's, the Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, um, that's coaches. literally my favorite. You know, <laughs> right now I'm living in a space of of possibilities on both sides of everything. Like both things can be true, and you know I don't um, work with older athletes like you do, but the younger generation, these teenagers, it's the same thing. It's like this. I don't want to let go of that control because if I let go of that control, then mm -hmm. I'm going to fail. I have, you know, then then my confidence will be, will you know go down the drain. All of these other things that people just hold on so tightly to, yep. and to let go is such a physical um, experience too mm -hmm. that you have to experience through your body. Which I'm a big fan of of just that whole conversation. But I think we try to use our minds to to wrap around that to where it's yeah. like, I'm just gonna let go with my mind. Yeah. And then yes, we can let go with our minds, but then we're just, our bodies are still tense and our minds are trying to let go yeah. and, and conceptualize this thing that we haven't actually experienced through our whole physical being, which I think quarantine has allowed people to tap in to themselves in a different way because they don't have that physical outlet in the same way. Um, so they have to release physically through other modalities. Yeah. Right. You know? I think that that's a, uh, 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 an appropriate kind of place to segue into something you were talking about in your podcast the other day, which is this idea, well, two ideas. The first being um, uh, to think about not just working out, but working in, mm -hmm. which is kind of what we've already been talking about, but also this idea of, of showing up is not enough. Like where is the intentionality that you're bringing to what it is that you're doing? And of course, this is something that's applicable to any athlete, how they're approaching their training regimen, but in life to whatever yeah. it is that we're doing, particularly now where everything has been upended and it's causing confusion and anxiety. And we're all kind of asking ourselves questions about like, what, why am I doing this? Like, yeah. you know, we're all being, it's re kind of, yeah, we're yeah. all, everybody's reevaluating in their own way right now. Yeah, but that's part of what I go into there. And that is, you know, once you have your purpose and your clarity, you can show up with intention um, because you're not questioning the goals. Mm -hmm. You're not questioning the path. Now you can focus all your attention onto executing the next workout, the next day at work, this project to the best of your ability. Cause you're not wondering, well, why am I, you don't wanna be asking, why am I doing this? That takes everything that you have in that workout or in that project or that vacation with your family, you show up with intention too. Like if you start wondering, why am I here? Mm -hmm. You're not gonna have a good vacation. Yeah. You're not gonna have a good workout. You're not gonna have a good workout, work outcome. And so the big thing there is once you have the bigger picture, the purpose, and once you have the clarity, which is what I call the coaching, the path, the manual, the sort of map, then you can execute the workout properly. You can execute your training without wondering, why am I doing this? Well, how is this gonna help me? Is this keeping me on my path towards my desired outcome? And 
is this what the coach and I discussed? It's all been laid out already. And we know that from swimming, we're just so ingrained in this that we don't, well, of course these 400 IMs are helping me swim my 400 IM better. Of course, this set of 200s with the middle hundred fly is helping me swim my 400 IM better. But in the endurance training world or in just in the work world, if you don't know where you're heading and why you're doing it, the quality of your work is always going to be limited because Mm -hmm. you're just constantly wasting cognitive energy, cognitive load as they call it on other things in order to make it more intentional and clear for you. Once you have that out, you can hit flow. You can, you're right Mm -hmm. in the moment because you're not worried about all the other things because they've been clarified for you. The scaffolding is set. And what I mean by that is when we start training, especially as masters athletes, not when we're younger, but as the training is a scaffolding. What happens inside that scaffolding is unique to everybody. Mm. I might be doing a lot of mental work. Other people might be doing physical work. Other people are doing spiritual work. The training is the placeholder. Mm. And what's being rebuilt in that building? Is it a complete rebuild? Is it some sort of remodeling, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? But this, the training sets up the opportunity every day to spend time with yourself. And you might not want to go in that day. You might yeah. just sort of, you know, do a little paint job. But other days you're like knocking down walls and you are doing some serious work inside and the tears come or the aha moment comes and you're like, wow, I hadn't realized how badly I am avoiding. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you're listening to a podcast and something you say, for example, just trigger something, boom, pause the podcast, keep rolling mm-hmm. and just work with that sentence or with that emotion that just came up. But again, I think it's important that that curiosity sets up the training, the scaffolding, mm-hmm. so that you have an opportunity every day or every few days, if you're not training every day to sort of do that working in and working out. Yeah.